Hey everybody! Uh, sorry I'm posting so late tonight, but it is finally, I would say about 98% done. I gotta talk to Joellen and ask her about a few final details, but here is the Egyptian city in 54 millimeter with the city surrounding the palace. So, oh geez, where do I even start with this bad boy? Um, well, when in doubt, just take a walk around. Um, here, these were the, uh, ah, the aquarium pieces. I kind of pictured these when, like if you go to Europe, you can go into a totally modern building and have a building from the 15th century standing right next door to it. And when I conceptually kind of put this together, I wanted it to appear further on in the Egyptian time period, so I wanted some really ancient looking stuff with it, which, I mean, Joellen totally found the right stuff, because it's all in ruins and, and it's, it looks fantastic. And I wanted to mix in with that ancient set. I wanted to mix in advanced architectural concepts. For instance, this massive, massive ceiling with very minimal support. As I knock stuff over. Um, so I dry brush the city today and I put on all the really cool little papyrus plants um, each individual building has about four of them this is two buildings connected so there's about eight papyrus plants on it and uh, I wanted to make the uh, the Sotek uh, pool look a little more lush so I utilized four of the palm trees for that um, once again we have the palm tree with the fountain in the middle. Um, around the inside of the courtyard, I didn't point this out last time, but I went with a, a group of uh, same design pillars and um, I really liked the, uh, the sitting pharaoh theme, so I ran with that on the inside there. And if you can see over the two trees, in back here there are two pharaohs sitting facing one another along with the corner pharaohs um, and like heads of state and I um, can't remember the god of death but uh, the dog um, which I particularly like um, let's see where else do I go with this um, the inside is painted so let's take a peek at that. These doors open up and if you want to know what 54 millimeter scale is, that guy right there next to the cat is 54 millimeter. And as you can see, actually I can zoom. Do, 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 do. And if I get low enough, you can see his face. So I dry brushed all that on the inside. Pretty slick looking, huh? He's got uh, like an onk on his arm. Ah, earthquake! And then if I swing back out, there's your 50, 54 millimeter tourist with his spy glasses. But I'll bring this back out. So I, yeah, I want to talk to Joellen and see what else uh, she would like uh, as final detail work on it. And um, wow, all I can say is that this was absolutely monumental. I had allotted about four days to do the whole job. Pfft, that was a joke. Um, but man, I'm uh, I never like people that toot their own horns, but. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with how it came out, particularly the way it looks against the sandy mat. 
because if you look at the sandy mat and then you look at like how the figures come out it really really does look the way I wanted it to look and uh, she's got a bunch of 54 millimeter figs so it's going to be pretty slick to see what they're going to look like all all up on here so it's been a saga it's been a long long time maybe I'll do a little flyby on these buildings hope I don't get you guys all sick but here is uh, we got it back as far as we can here's a uh, Egyptian walking down the street view do, 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 do. All the little shops and stuff. All the little staircases. This one I kind of pictured as like a bread shop, you know, with a half open door and, you know, the lowered roof. I mean, it's extra tall for like all the heat and stuff, but they like, you know, push the bread out to dry up on the roof and stuff. Do, 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 do. And then, of course, the crazy amounts of detail on these walls. I just loved dry brushing this. There's a real connection sometime between the sculptor and the artist. And you can tell a great sculptor by how much the artists appreciate working from their sculptures. And I think any any artist will tell you that. But most people don't really think about it. You know, and there's varying levels of difficulty. I mean if you do an old D and D figure and you compare it with the detail they pull out on say a Reaper figure or a hero level Warhammer figure. Man, it is, uh, it's demanding, but it's beautiful. Because there was so much to work with, I could only highlight this. I mean, you could easily add another half a week if I second and third layered this. My shoulder is absolutely killing me, but, you know, some prices are worth paying and I would definitely say that this was worth paying the price for. Because when you're old and you're all decayed, you can still say, I made that. And I'll be pretty happy to say that. Um... Don't know what else to say, really. But, um... God, I wish I had a painted Tomb King's army. I would totally put that out. Because these doors are tall, but... Those Ubishi... You know, if they had to have it so the Ubishi could walk through there... Eh, you might be able to sneak away with saying this is a 28mm scale building. In all its grandeur. So, I want to thank everybody for posting during this extremely long project that took a week. But, uh, I'm real happy about it. I think Joanne will like it as well. Another one I'm going to hate to let go. <laughs> but then you know you did the job right, so that's a good thing. So, I'm going to let you guys go because I'm probably making you ill. I'm making myself ill. But man, when you put a week's worth in, oh, God, it's killer. So, on to Eldar. So, all you 40k Eldar people, you're going to be very happy in the near future. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.